Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I'm just going to go ahead and record this real quick because I don't have a ton to say, but I will probably talk a little bit longer than you probably you know expected, um, which is I just want to talk about the post credit scene for Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, obviously, there was two scenes. There was one mid credit, uh, which we're going to talk about in this episode, and then they at the end of the credits, they showed the Doctor Strange movie trailer, which um, which I think they're going to release online at some point, too. So, um, so I don't know, someone told me that, that going in, they're like, oh, at the end of the movie, there's going to be a Doctor Strange trailer. I think my friend Nate told me that. So it didn't surprise me to see it, but he said, oh, they put it at the end because it spoils this movie. But when I watched the trailer, I was like, ah, it didn't really spoil that much. So, um, so you won't get a trailer reaction from me because I did see the, the you know, trailer on the big screen. Um, but my thoughts real quickly on the, on the Doctor Strange thing is that it looks neat. I'm excited for that movie and, uh, and I'll definitely do a review of the movie, you know, when it comes out, um, early next year. So for this scene though, the Venom scene, I freaking love this scene. <laughs> the reason why I love this scene is because, so I was thinking about this, when you're pulled from another universe, the, the movie kind of uh, showed without spoon feeding you that you kind of appear near where you were in your universe. So like the, the, the river that uh, Dr. Octopus was building his big machine on, he wakes up uh, near that uh, river and climbs onto the bridge where he comes across Spider-Man um, in that, in, you know, f coming up from under the bridge. And that's where he fights Spider-Man on the bridge. And then uh, the Green Goblin shows up not too far from there because him and Spider-Man fought near a river, um, you know, uh, uh, coming off the you know bridge fight or whatever in the Tobey Maguire movie. Um, but they were in like this rubble and, uh, and they were fighting in that rubble. And that was near, there was like water in the background, I think, too. So... To me, I'm like, okay, that shows that th these guys came from similar directions. So they were pulled from the spot in their universe and put in that same spot in this universe. And that explains where Electro, why he was out near some power lines, because he was kind of moving through power lines uh, when he was fighting Andrew Garfield. Uh, and then Lizard was found in the sewers. Uh, so we don't know what part of the story he was plucked from, but he got pulled in and, uh, and you know, Doctor Strange captured him. And then Sandman, he was just, I guess, out wandering and ended up, you know, near... Um, the electro guy. So, so to me, uh, that kind of established wherever you are in your universe, you're going to end up in that same spot in this universe. So since Venom 2 ended with Eddie on an island and at a resort and he gets teleported to the MCU, now he's in Mexico <laughs> at a bar getting hammered drunk. And, uh, and he's like, the bartender is explaining to him, um, all, all the Marvel heroes. He's like, yeah, there's a guy in an iron suit and uh, who died and people disappeared for five years and then they came back and there was a purple alien with a nutsack chin um, and there's a guy named Spider-Man in New York. And so so Eddie's just getting hammered. He's like, all right, go through this with me again. So there's superheroes in this universe. Like there's more than just me. And the guy's like, I don't even know who you are. And the suit, the, the symbiote's talking to him like, Eddie, you know, stop. He's already gone over this, you know. And, uh, and Eddie's just getting hand, just kicking back shots. And he's like, tell me more about this. And, and then he's like, okay, so basically what I need to do is I need to go to New York and talk to this Spider-Man guy. Um, and I, I don't know why, I guess because when he came into the universe, it was right when the identity got revealed, um, which is interesting to me. Um, well, I guess it wasn't right when the, because, because J. John Jameson is running that, that story over and over throughout the movie. So at one of the times, I guess whenever the spell is cast, um, Eddie ends up in this universe and he's in Mexico. So he can't get to New York. He can't be part of this fight or whatever. Um, and I think I've seen, I think Eddie and uh, uh, Eddie's mullet and a couple other people have said in comments and stuff that they, they say that the symbiote um, because it has universal knowledge that it's, that's what it says to Eddie at the end of the second movie um, that it, uh, it maybe knows who Peter Parker is because maybe this symbiote is somehow connected to the Toby symbiote, or at least has knowledge of it in some way, which would be really weird and, and very OP, I, I think, of the symbiotes to have interdimensional knowledge of other things. Um, but I mean, who, I don't know, whatever, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I think that's just really OP, you know, like really overpowered to have uh, of an ability. Um, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. But like, apparently, Somehow Eddie and the suit are in this universe. Apparently, the spell was only supposed to bring people over that knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man. I guess that also counts 
Spider-Man, but it didn't bring Mary Jane over or Gwen before she died, which that, that could have been a heartbreaking moment for um, Andrew Garfield. Um, it didn't do that. So Eddie is still an anomaly to me. Uh, if you have a theory about that, let me know down below. I'm sure Eddie's mullet has his theory about the symbiote knows Peter Parker's Spider-Man somehow. Um, I guess when he saw them on the screen at the end of Venom 2, he licked the screen. He's like, oh, that guy. And then he like licks the screen. And I'm like, well, and I can't remember. I I, I got to... I just bought the movie today. So like, I guess I need to rewatch it and see if he says, oh, that guy to Jameson or if he says it to Spider-Man. I think he says it to Spider-Man. Um, Cause if he said it to Jameson, that would make sense. Cause he probably knows a Jameson in his universe. But, uh, but I think he said it to Spider-Man. So I don't know. The, the theory is, is that, that Venom, the suit knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man and that's how they got pulled in this universe. That's the theory at least, um, which I guess that's a good theory. I mean, I don't have any better explanation, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue that, but the fact that Eddie spent his entire time in the MCU at one little bar in Mexico talking to a bartender about all the heroes was amazing to me. I thought that was great. It's very in keeping with how just goofy that character is. He's not, a, he doesn't get up and go, you know, and, and be a part of something. He's very much like a, you know, <laughs> like confused idiot um and so it just it was in keeping with the character but it, it added for a very funny moment that he missed this incredible battle that it would have been great to see him a part of um especially with toby there and stuff because they would have been like whoa it's venom and then he's like what he's like how do you know who i am you know or whatever um but to me like all that like him just being in the bar that was funny enough i thought it was great um but a as he's like drinking he's like all right let's go to new york and let's find spider-man he gets sent right back to his world. <laughs> so, so like I said, he spent his whole time in the MCU at a bar in Mexico, um, and he gets teleported back to his world. Uh, but the cool thing was, is that there's a little sliver of the symbiote on the bar still there with the thought in it to go to New York and find Spider-Man. So to me, I think they pretty much just introduced the alien costume into the MCU or into that version of Spider-Man. Um, looks like he's not going to get it through other means. Um, he's going to get it this way. But then I also thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if uh, if that wasn't Venom and that was Carnage? Uh, because Carnage was eaten by Venom at the end of the Venom 2 movie. Spoiler alert for that movie. Um, but he, you know, Venom, that's how he beat Carnage. He killed uh, Cletus Cassidy and then he ate the Carnage symbiote like he did in the comic books. But the, um, the suit, as far as I know, I guess it could still be inside of him, um, you know, I don't know. I, so so I don't know what's left behind. I'm going to guess they're just going to do the obvious thing and it's just a sliver of the black costume and that way it bonds with Spider-Man and he can become, you know, black costume Spider-Man. Um, but he'll be different, you know, because this Venom is a hero. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of a good guy. So a sliver of that going on this Spider-Man would just, it wouldn't like corrupt him or anything like that. So it could lead to some fun stories uh, for sure. But then I thought, well, if it's Carnage, it could lead to us seeing Spider-Man actually become a villain as Spider Carnage. And then maybe they would need Venom to come back into this universe to stop him. And then you get your crossover. Um, so that's what I said this movie. At the end of it, there was just so many possibilities. And this is one of the ones where I'm like, even this one scene, there's like three or four different things you can do with that little sliver of symbiote. It could be Venom. It could be Carnage. It could be another offspring. You know, it, it could be, there's so many things it could be. Um, and uh, it, I don't know, it could be a keep that awakens Null and, you know, who knows? It could be a lot of things. But to me, it just, it made me smile seeing that at the end and and it made me get a little excited. I'm like, okay, well, this Spider-Man movie, as long as the next one is, um, you know, as half as focused on Peter Parker and delivers the emotions that this movie did, as long as it does that, I'll be happy with the you know next movie. Um, I just don't want it to be like the first two Spider-Man movies too much. Those were kind of man to me. Spider-Man has grown up a lot in this movie. He's very much um, Spider-Man by the end, and he's his own man by the end. And I kind of want to see where that goes now because I think Tom Holland is a great Spider-Man, and uh, and I want to see more of of that moving forward. So so yeah. Um, but let me know what you think. Uh, you know, obviously he's going to cross over with Venom at some point, but I think they want to get Venom three in there first and kind of wrap up that and maybe set up Morbius and Craven possibly, and then do their crossover. So we'll see. I'm sure they're still kind of officially setting up their Sinister Six. I know some people were saying, No Way Home is Sinister Six, even though there was just five villains and a tree or Venom, you know, I guess. Um, but he was in Mexico the whole time. But to me, that's not a proper Sinister Six. I think them building 
Vulture and possibly bring back Mysterio and have Craven and Morbius. Like all of that, I think, you know, that to me is I'd like seeing them build it, you know, as opposed to just taking everything that was there before and taking the shortcut. I'm glad they're not doing that. Um, I want to see a proper Sinister Six versus Spider-Man movie and uh, solo Spider-Man versus Sinister Six. And I think we're probably going to get that now. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. But this scene here, this Venom scene was amazing. So let me know your thoughts down below. Um, if you liked it or disliked it, I think there were some people that already wrote me and said they didn't like the scene. But uh, for me, I, I really enjoyed the scene. I thought it was in keeping with that character. Um, but it doesn't mean it's gone for good. It doesn't mean the multiverse doors are closed for good. Spider-Verse is still going on. There's still plenty of ways for Venom and Spider-Man to meet each other. Uh, Tom Holland and Tom Hardy specifically. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, Sony will figure out a way to do it sooner than later, uh, for sure. So let me know your thoughts down below, and we'll continue talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.